y is equals to absolute value of f of x and y is equals to f of the absolute value of x. So we have two functions there that we want to sketch their graphs. Let's start with the first one. To sketch the graph of y equals to f of x, absolute value of f of x. Number one, sketch the graph of y equals to f of x. A circle, a graph of y equals to f of x. So let's say that's the graph you have sketched. You go to step number two, reflect any parts where f of x is less than zero. So any part where it is below zero, reflect that part on the y-axis, in the y-axis. So this is what it would look like. So these parts which are below the y-axis, I've colored it in green, the part below the y-axis, you reflect it. So if we reflect those parts, which are, this, is, this part is below the y-axis, this one in green is also below the y-axis. So we reflect it. Let's reflect the first one, it goes up. And the next one, you reflect it, it goes up there. So all the part below the y-axis go to the top. That's what you are doing. And that's your final. And then you delete the parts below after you delete these parts because you don't need them. So you delete the parts below and you get your final answer. So that's the final answer for the graph. So three things you do. Sketch the graph of y equals to f of x. Reflect the parts which are below the x-axis and then delete the parts which are below the x-axis. And this is the x-axis. I put the straight line there just to remind you. That's the x-axis. So that x-axis is representing the mirror. It's like having a reflection. Whatever is below goes to the top. This is below, it goes to the top. This is below, it goes to the top. So it's like having a mirror line in that part there. To sketch the graph of y equals to f of absolute value of x, that stands for absolute value of x. You sketch the graph of y equals to f of x for x greater than or equals to zero. That means from zero upwards. So you start from zero going to the right. So you sketch the right hand side and I'll highlight it in green, the part which is for number one. So number one, you sketch that part in green. And then number two, reflect this in the Y axis. So the Y axis now acting like the mirror line. So the Y axis is like the mirror line and you reflect it to on the other to go to the other side. You reflect it in this Y axis. And when you reflect it, you can look at the distance. This distance on the object side should be equal to the same distance on the image side. And when you reflect it, that gives you the answer. So step number one, sketch the graph of y equals f of x for x greater than zero, the green part, and then reflect this in the y axis. So this is a summary of what you do when you do that type of, to sketch those two types of graphs. The mirror line for the first one is the x axis. And the mirror line for the second one is the y-axis. What did the calculator say to the math students? You can count on me. Let's look at this example. f of x is equals to x squared minus 3x minus 10. Sketch the graph of y equals to f of x. To sketch that graph, if you have the graphics calculator, you can use it. But to sketch the graph without the graphics calculator, you first of all factorize it using your knowledge from GCSE. It becomes X minus five, X plus two. And the, the minus five, you get the five there. And you get the minus two there. So you mark minus two and you mark five. And then you put X equals to zero. So you put for F of X equals to zero. And then you would get 
zero, zero, and you get the y axis will be minus 10. So you get that to be minus 10. And then you sketch the graph. So the graph of x squared minus 3x minus 10 cuts the x axis at minus 2 and at 5. And it cuts the y axis at minus 10. So you have to mark these three points when you sketch the graph, those three points. That's where you get your marks for the exams. Part B, sketch the graph of y equals to absolute value of f of x. So what we want to do is to reflect part of the curve f of x below the x axis. So the negative values of y, we want to reflect it in the x axis. So the x axis now is like the mirror line. So whatever is below the x axis, I'll color it in green. What's below the x axis, I've colored it in green. And then you reflect it. And when you reflect it, that's what you would get if you look at the diagram below. So you reflect what was below the x axis, you reflect it, and that gives you the final answer when you do that for the graph of y equals to f of x. For part C, to sketch the graph of f of the absolute value of x, we first of all sketch the graph of y equals to f of x, the part which are bigger than O equals to zero. And that part which we sketch is the one I've colored in green. So the one which is in green is the part which we sketch. And then we will use the y axis as the mirror line. The y axis will be the mirror line. And we will reflect it in the y axis. And when you reflect it in the y axis, that gives you the graph. So what you have done is sketch the graph of y equals f of x only for the parts which are in the positive or x greater than or equals to zero. And that's the green part. And then use the y axis as a mirror and then reflect it to get y equals to f of absolute value of x. Okay, let's do it on the graphics calculator. You first of all type the function x squared minus 3x minus 10. Remember the color, it is in blue color. And we want to find the absolute value. We also do the one in red, x squared minus 3x minus 10. I've got it there in red. And don't forget the absolute signs, the absolute signs at the end. So your calculator, you would use A, B, S. So you use options and menu to choose that. When you plot the, calc the, the graph on the calculator, the blue one, it looks like that. And that will be the setting in the view window so you can see the whole graph. So X would go from minus 10 up to 10 and Y will go from minus 10 to 15. Or you can make it a lot wider. So you go X and Y. So X will go from minus 10 up to 10 and Y from minus 15 up to 15. That way you see everything in one view. And when you put the two graphs together, so this is the first one in blue, first one in blue, and that's the second one in red. First one in blue, and that's the second one in red. And if we want to do the next graph, I've put it there in the green, Y3. F of the absolute value of X squared minus three times the absolute value of X minus 10. If you do the first part where it is above zero, so F of X, where X is greater than or equal to zero, that means you start from zero going upwards. So make sure you start from zero, you start from zero. After that, 
you do the you sketch the graph again on the calculator without starting from zero you can start from the minus 10 up to 10 from minus say 15 up to plus 15 and you will get that reflected shape there So for the next type of question, we're going to sketch two graphs, trigonometric graphs. Y is equals to sine X and Y equals to absolute value of sine X. So Y equals to sine X is in blue and Y equals to absolute value of sine X. The absolute line are those red lines on the side. Y equals absolute value of sine X. So that's the graph of Y equals to sine X. Start from zero, you see the one wave and the, going to the right, and you see another wave going to the left. And we go from minus 360 all the way to plus 360 in steps of 90, 90, 90, 90. And, and that's the setting for the view window for minus 360 up to 360. Scale steps of 90. And minimum value is minus one, maximum value is one. And that is what the reflection looks like. Everything on the negative side has been reflected up the positive. And if we plot Y equals to the absolute value of sign of absolute value of X, which is in green, sign of the absolute value of X. This is what it will look like. That is what it will look like. So to summarize, if the first graph is your graph of Y equals to sine X, the graph of Y equals to absolute value of sine X is the second one where the, the green part has been reflected upwards. And then the third one is the graph of Y equals to sign of the absolute value of X. So you plot the part which is bigger than zero. And then the mirror is the Y axis. So the Y axis is the mirror and you reflect it. And for this one, the X axis is the mirror and you reflect it upwards. Example, the diagram shows the graph of Y equals to H of X with five points labeled. Sketch each of the following graphs labeling the points corresponding to A, B, C, D, and E, and any points of intersection with the coordinate axis. A, Y equals to the absolute value of H of X, and B, Y equals to H of the absolute value of X. And the points, these are the points A, B, C, D, and E. When you sketch these two graphs, those points, some of them will change and you have to label the new points. So for part A, we have to look at it carefully. This is the before and this is the after. Remember before and after, what is different? Look at it carefully. If we look here, I will use uh, this pink color. Before, there was this one pointing, the one below the x-axis there in pink, and there was this part below the x-axis there in pink. Now, in the after, that part that was in pink has been reflected upwards ab above the x-axis. The part that was in pink there has moved to, to above the x-axis. So the x-axis is acting as the mirror line. So it's like a reflection in the x-axis. So whatever was below the x-axis has been reflected 
above the x-axis. So let's mark those coordinates. The coordinate for E, point E, the coordinate for point E is six minus five. When you move it to the top, it becomes six plus five. That's the one that has changed. All the other ones, which were below the x-axis would move as well. But that coordinate for E has changed. So it's, called, it's changed from minus five to plus five. For the graph of H bracket, absolute value of X, we look at the before. And we look at the after. So before is Y equals to H of X. After is Y equals to H of the absolute value of X. So what has changed? So in the before, we only plotted in the before, we only plotted the parts which were above zero, where X is bigger than zero. So when we plot only that part, so you can see here, we've plotted only this part there. This is the part where X is bigger than or equal to zero. So we start from zero, going upwards and then what do we do after we use the middle line as the mirror that's the y-axis the y-axis now acts as a mirror and then we reflect it so whatever was on the right side comes to the left we reflect it So what we get is, after the reflection, six minus five would come to the left side, it will be minus six minus five. So that one would change. And three zero would become minus three zero. So the point three zero, would become minus three zero. And the point six minus five will become minus six minus five. 